everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and in this video we are going to be making a baby blanket. Well actually it's more for a push chair or a stroller so I have made this blanket holding two strands of yarn together and it is 97 centimeters by 76 centimeters big and that's 37 by 30 inches. I am also going to try and explain to you how these multiples work for making your blankets bigger or smaller. So what do you need for this project? I used Starcraft Special DK and I was always using two strands. So whatever combination of colours you want to do, um, I used two strands throughout the blanket. Then uh, I am using a 5mm hook for the blanket itself so with my two strands and then for the border I am using a four and a half so a hook half a size smaller than what you used for your blanket then I have a needle of course for sewing in the ends and some scissors so in this blanket we are going to be holding two strands of yarn together I am going to treat them as one and I am also going to say pick up your strand and that means the two okay so i'm just going to consider that they are one strand with your larger hook that's the one that you're going to use for the body of the blanket you are going to get started by holding both your yarns together making a slip knot taking your fingers out like so and inserting your hook now, the multiples of a V-stitch blanket, right? That's what we need. I'm going to try and explain this to you in a logical way. Now, we, um, obviously, this blanket has a certain size. That's why it's a baby blanket. If you want to make it smaller, if you want to make it bigger, you're going to have to take into account the multiple that you need for the repeat of the stitch. So for a V-stitch, that's a multiple of three. But you also need a stitch on the side to start with and on the end to start with. So this is how I sort of see it. And I'm hoping that if I explain it to you like this, that you will be able to work it out for any size blanket. And also it will help you for more understanding for other stitches as well. OK, or what I mean, other multiples for other stitches. So first of all, we are going to make our chain. The first chain that we are going to do is the stitch at the end of our blanket, right? So that's your end stitch. Then you are going to have your multiples. At the end of your multiples, you're going to have another chain for your other end stitch, right? So now the multiples. So for the V stitch, your multiple is three. I here, for this baby blanket here, I did 43 times 3. So I chained 129. <laughs> um, so 129, but of course I'm not counting this one. Okay, so this is my 1. Now I'm going to start counting one again okay because this one is not part of your stitch repeat okay so i am going to do another example i'm going to make a smaller sample so i can show you in the viewfinder so you can see it all in one go okay so my example is going to have six times three so that's 18 so now i'm going to start counting again one two three four, five, six, I'm not holding it properly, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So these eighteen chains that I've done now, bar the last one, so that's eighteen chains, those are the ones I'm going to need for my stitch repeat. This is the one I'm using for my last stitch and this is the one I'm using for my last stitch okay 
So this way you have an edge to your blanket. OK, so we're creating on each side, we're creating a stitch which will ensure we have a straight edge. So sometimes I say chain 18 plus 2 plus 2. OK, so that is what this means. Chain 18 is this. And that, yeah, so that's the chain 18. Then I say plus 2, that's these ones. And then I say plus 2. And that last plus 2, that is your turning chain. So this is that 1 from the plus 2. I'm going to keep my finger on that. 1. Oh, yeah, pick up both your loops and two. OK, so this is now my turning chain. That turning chain is going to count as a double crochet throughout. So this is now my first stitch of my round, my double crochet coming out of my last stitch. And of course, that last stitch is meant for that edge stitch. Basically, that's what we could call it. OK, now. So one, two for the chain, one here for the chain there. Now, these next three stitches, this is where you're going to put your first V stitch. OK, and a V stitch is made up of one double crochet, one chain and one double crochet in the middle stitch. So that would be this one here. I need more fingers. <laughs> OK, so holding my thumb there now I'm going to yarn over into that stitch there and pick up a loop yeah yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and basically so for that first V stitch we are skipping after our chain here so we've got the two chains we've got the chain at the end that the one that was the extra so this here is the first stitch of our 18 chains and that's the one that we're skipping. OK, so we now do another double crochet because, of course, I have to finish that V stitch. Let me get in there properly. Yeah. There we go. OK, so this is our first V stitch in its correct place. So those are the first three stitches with the first V stitch in it. Then we go to the next three stitches. Because our V-stitch is made up of three stitches, we now have to use the next three stitches. Not this one, because obviously this one belonged to those first three for that first repeat of our V-stitch. Now we go to the next three. See, this three. And um, again, we do a stitch here, or we do the V-stitch there. So basically, yes, people always say skip two in the third. Right. And that's correct, because, of course, that brings you to the next lot of three stitches to that middle chain of it. Okay, so I'm hoping that the way I'm explaining this is going to be making a little bit more sense for those who are struggling to understand how this sort of multiple works. OK, so once again, this stitch belongs to the multiple of this V stitch. Now we start counting again. One, two, three. This is the next lot into the middle there. That's where we are going to do the V stitch. And it's just, you know, this first row is always a little bit more where you need your attention. Obviously, I am doing a very short one, so I can show you the whole thing in one go on your screen, which helps for you to understand. And if you are doing this, so you are now going to do 43 times a V stitch. OK, so that will give you the same width as my or the same length in this case as my blanket was or is better. <laughs> OK, so I am already at the end of my row. OK, so this is my last multiple of three and then indeed here I have one more chain left because of course I want to do a double crochet at the end of my line here so I can make a side to my square or to my blanket okay so that's what we are doing now we are going to chain two actually just like we did here chain two 
return and now it's a lot easier because now you're just going to place your v-stitches in the chain space of the v-stitch below and this of course makes that yes we pay a lot of attention in the first row to make sure that we space out our v-stitches over the multiples but of course this makes now that we can work quite fast because obviously it's a lot easier to find the next chain space and you don't need to count anymore so you've got your habit of doing one double crochet one chain one double crochet into the chain space below there we go and look i'm already at the end so when you do your last v stitch you know you have got to do that last stitch here it's not always clear okay so this was a chain i try to pick up two strands here just to make sure that it doesn't stretch sometimes you'll only be able to for example do this you know go into here that doesn't make for such a nice look look that stretches okay so i do try to pick up two strands mm, look this now has gone into the opening that would be my last resort because sometimes you just can't get in there but i was in there just now i came out again to show you all the wrong ones <laughs> no see now it's not going to work anymore but yeah okay this is what i did right so see you can see i've got the two strands or well you know four strands on here and now yeah it doesn't stretch of course it is stretchy now because i've stretched it haven't i <laughs> it's showing you <laughs> okay but there we go okay so that's what we've got now so as you can see let me just put this down as you can see we are creating straight edges straight sides by doing that extra stitch on the side okay and that makes that our work is nice and straight so i am now going to continue doing this for a number of rows and so here i did graphite and duck egg um, i did two strands of graphite one strand of duck egg and one strand of graphite here i'm using uh, cream and duck egg combined because i thought it would be a nice light combination to show you when the time comes to change color you're going to not do the last pull through on that last double crochet that you're doing of the round. You are then going to separate your strands and I am going to cut off the cream. And then I am going to bring in a second strand of duck egg. I'm going to just lay it against the cream that you cut off. Yarn it over and pull it up. There we go. Okay, so your both ends are now hanging out there. You could knot them or, you know, quickly sew them in. And that's how you will then continue with your other combination of strands. So for this blanket here, I did 17 times three rows so three rows each time in that particular color and i did that 17 times okay so i am going to get on and make a little square and i'll be back to show you how to do the border So I'm just sewing in the last end. Yippee! <laughs> and of course my mini blanket is finished. Right. So now take your smaller hook and with your chosen yarn for your border. So I'm going to do a border in the duck egg. So two duck egg strands. We are going to make a slip knot. Insert your hook. And we are going to get started with a standing half double crochet. Now, I always like to start in a corner. So um, you just sort of try to work out which would have been the sort of that top of that edge stitch here. OK, 
So here we are. I think I've got it here. That's one of the legs and then there's another leg there. It just takes a little bit of an eye to recognize that. But if you can't find it, just go into the opening. That's fine. OK, so this is the one that you are going to go into. Now that I've got that, I forgot to yarn over. So yarn over into that location, pull up a loop. And then you are going to do yarn over and pull through the three loops on your hook. A bit awkward to start with, but it's OK. So again, into that same location. It helps if you've opened it up beforehand, of course, and through the three loops on your hook. One chain and again in that same location because we are starting out by doing a corner. I always like to start with doing a corner because then, you know, sort of, yeah. It establishes the border. Now we are going to do one stitch on top of each stitch here, of course. So we have this one. Yeah. So you know which one you are doing. Now, I couldn't get into that one. That's OK. You go around it. I can get into these ones. That's fine. Yeah. Here again, difficult to get in, but I know there should be one there because we did one there. So these are the stitches on top of the double crochet. This is the chain in between. Oh, and it's splitting now. There we go. Then here, no, I've got to redo that. Yes. Yeah. So when you do see that, don't just keep going. It's best to just undo that stitch and do it again. So into the stitch here, into the stitch here and around here because it's difficult to get into that chain. So this is how you're going to do one side, of course, because that's a stitch that you've got there. Those are V's that you can pick up. Now we're going to go to the other side, obviously, and we are on the side. So we're working with those side double crochets. Let me show you what I do. But before I do that, we have another corner to make. So once again, I try and pick up a sensible amount of yeah, strands just to make sure it doesn't, um, you know, stretch. So I've done two half double crochets, a chain. And there we go. Another two half double crochets. And as you can see, that provides us with a nice corner. See, and I think the amount there is fine because it gives you a corner. And it's not rounded. But it's cornery enough, if you get my, if you, <laughs> if you see what I'm trying to say. OK, now the side. I always find it difficult to know how many stitches I'm going to put there. I would say per double crochet, you do two to, uh, half double crochets, but that's too much. So what I try and do is per your sort of two double crochets like this. So you've got a double crochet here or a chain and a double crochet here. I try and do three stitches. So one around the double crochet, one where they sort of meet and one again around. So one in where they meet, one around, one where they meet and so on. OK, so let's see if we can do that. So we've done our corner, then we're going to go around here. Oops. Okay, then we have that meeting place. So we go into there and do one there. Then here around again. The meeting place. Oh, I've got it too far from me. I'm trying to do this in the viewfinder. <laughs> okay, so this way you're putting enough stitches there to cover the border but not too many not too many because otherwise you might get a wavy border okay so next and this is how you're going to continue on this side of course your your side is going to be much longer <laughs> and I am nearly at the corner here so I will show you what is this I forgot to sew these in. <laughs> Honestly, I thought I'd done them all. Typical, isn't it? There we go. Okay, 
so we are here where we need to be I think just one more here yeah and then here yeah the corner let's try and find a good location to put our corner in this is where I sewn in the end so it's not so easy but it will work there we go make it do what you want it to do <laughs> right there we are okay and then of course here we're on that bottom chain so we are going to start picking up those loops that were left over from the chain or if not then go in between and of course we know that in between we have to do two because we skipped two then here we have the one from the chain and then we do two so yeah remember how many stitches you did remember how many chains you did and try to replicate them but don't put too many the secret here is less is more okay um, fill up your side yes but don't overdo it because you might get a wavy border I have a video coming out with more tips and tricks to avoid a wavy border so if you want to um, have a look at that make sure you subscribe to the channel and go and have a look at the Facebook group because there you will be able to find advice as well so I am going to keep going one more here and one more on the side of it of course and then you start your corner I'm going to try and pick up yeah four strands so in that turning chain and I do my corner of two half double crochets a chain and two half double crochets there we go okay and then we put one there then yeah I think I'm going to put one there not in the thing not in the meeting place just beside it ah yeah do one there then it does work out it's yeah it's it's a little bit you need to just assess it and see what you think but like I said best not to do too many <laughs> and I think I'm on a roll here so I'm going to keep going so I do one in the meeting place and one on either side, basically. And there seem to be, you know, you sort of recognize the locations after a little while, because, of course, you'll be doing this for a bit longer than I am. And if you skip one, don't worry, because it's better. Like I said, less is more. Plus, also, you're not going to see the difference between the two sides. Um, you know, if you have one or two stitches or out on either side, that doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see that. And then you do a slip stitch, but you skip that first standing double crochet. You go under the next V, you do a slip stitch and you complete the round. Chain two. And then you are going to go and do a half double crochet in each stitch around and when you get to the chain here that's where you're going to do your corner which is two half double crochets a chain and two half double crochets so when you've done your corner you skip that chain that's under here because that belongs to this stitch there but you go straight to this one here and if you do that every corner, then that's fine, obviously. But again, like I said, less is more. So I've done my last half double crochet here. This stitch here has that chain coming out of, so that is filled with that stitch. You're going to go to this V here, go under it, carefully yeah sometimes it just doesn't want to do that but do persuade it and you do a slip stitch there you go okay and that closes the round 
So I've now done two rows of half double crochet border around my sample piece. But of course, in the baby blanket, I did four rounds. And I think that was a nice width because that's sort of about the same width as my stripes were. And I think that made it look really good. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed all the explanation about the V-stitch and the multiples. And I hope you will try it out. And of course I had to take this blanket on its own photo shoot. So I took it to the beach and I draped it over the railing here and I thought it looked really, really nice. Now I know that dark colors for baby blankets are maybe not everybody's liking, but when my babies were small, they would get a blanket dirty in no time. They uh, would eat on it, they would play on it and you know I would really appreciate the dark colors. Now I um, also took it to my neighbors because they have a child and they have a push chair and of course so I asked them if I could drape the blanket over their push chair and looking at it like this I think you know if there was a child in there I think the child would be happy to be tucked in into this baby blanket to keep it warm. So thank you so very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Please like and share this video, subscribe to be notified of every new video and go to our Facebook group to become a member of our crochet community there. Here are some more videos you might find interesting. Thank you so very much for watching and come back soon. Bye!